We've mentioned it on the show before. 2024 will be the first year two particular broods of cicadas will emerge simultaneously since Thomas Jefferson was president. While their song can be deafening, these critters present a tasty treat to dogs. Should we worry? Let's welcome Dr. Gary Richter, founder of Ultimate Pet Nutrition. Thanks for being here. Thank you, I'm thrilled to be here. All right, so cicadas, are they bad for dogs? Are they okay for dogs? They're, they're, they're totally fine. Um, it's a little gross, uh, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's a protein source. In fact, you may have seen there's some other news stories around that there's actually restaurants that are putting them on the menu for people. Yeah. So, uh, so they are absolutely non-toxic, uh, just a little icky. Well, when you've got a bumper crop, such as what we're going to experience this spring, you may as well start adding them to recipes. How big is an average cicada? Oh, they can actually be quite large. They're, you know, they can be, a, a, you know, as much as a couple of inches long. So it's a, it's a large bug. So are you saying that dogs are going to be attracted to them as they're flying around or as they're expiring? What, what is the, the time when they, how long do they live and, and where do dogs find them? Well, you know, I mean, their, their, their life cycle is such that, as you know, I mean, they live for a very long time under the ground, yeah. but, but once they emerge, it's a very short period of time, you know, days or weeks. Um, and at that point, um, you know, they're, they're there to sort of mate and, and that's the end of things for them. So, you know, dogs may be attracted to them flying around. I mean, I've, I've had dogs that will sort of track house flies as yes. they fly around. Um, and this is a real big house fly. Um, but uh, but certainly as they uh, you know as they find them laying on the ground as they're as they're dying they could be very attractive as a tasty snack. Right. Okay. So so once they've ingested several of these uh, tasty critters, is there any harm to their system whatsoever? Could there be any risk? Um, you know, big picture risk. No. Uh, you know. Any any unusual ingestion of something that that your dog is not used to can potentially cause gastrointestinal upset. So there's always the chance of some upset tummies, vomiting, and diarrhea. But again, they're not toxic. There's nothing to worry about. Uh, it's at the end of the day, it's it's a protein source. Yeah, but they have a hard exoskeleton, so that could be a little irritating for their digestion. Also, if you treat your yard with pest control, could this rub off onto the cicadas and therefore get into your dog system? So, I mean, the short answer is yes. I mean, the bigger picture is, is if you're treating your yard with pest control, that's a bigger issue anyway, because clearly your dog's in your yard, walking around, nosing around in your grass. So probably the cicadas are not high on the list of concerns in that sense. But, you know, needless to say, people do need to be very cognizant of what they're spraying their yard with as it pertains to not only what they're pets are exposed to, but also what their family is being exposed to. That is true. Now, you're a holistic veterinarian. What does that mean exactly? So what it means is that I practice, uh, I would really describe myself as an integrative veterinarian, meaning I practice conventional Western medicine, like you know when you go to the veterinary office, what you're used to seeing, but we also practice a lot of holistic medicine. So acupuncture, chiropractic, herbal therapy, hyperbaric oxygen. We do a lot of work with uh, talking to people about proper whole food nutrition for dogs. Uh, you know, as you might be aware of, uh, I, I actually have developed a number of supplements and, and whole, whole fresh food diets for dogs and cats uh, through ultimate pet nutrition. Yes, okay, so as a holistic practitioner, if a yeah. dog should, or a cat, have an upset stomach, what is the best way to treat it? You know, generally speaking, the best way to treat it is to give them a little bit of time. Um, you know, you, if, if, if they, uh, you know, if they're having some trouble, you can feed them a bland diet uh, for a few days, like, you know, maybe some, you know, boiled chicken, ground beef, some sort of just lean, bland protein, and then maybe some some rice or, or boiled potatoes, something like that. If, if there's really severe vomiting or diarrhea, that's a good time to call your veterinarian. But I mean, just like with us, for most pets, a tummy upset is a passing thing for a day or two, and they'll get better. How many pets do you have? I currently have two little dogs, Sammy and Marty. Sammy and Marty, and what do they eat on a daily basis? Uh, on a daily basis, they eat uh, the food that I formulated, NutriComplete. It's a freeze-dried raw food diet. Uh, we have it in a number of different uh, protein sources. So I like to rotate them through different proteins over time to give their system a variety 
which is really great for their digestion and their immune system. Well, definitely some wonderful tips are on your website. People can adopt some of those, incorporate them into their daily lives with their pets. Dr. Richter, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Thank you so much. We're back after this.